The Tulambi language sounds complex. At this point, it's totally incomprehensible. They remain on guard. I am reassured when Angio returns the gift of fire. His way is not quite as fast as a match, but is probably more reliable in the damp rainforest. It certainly makes lighting pipes easy. They seem to consume wild tobacco heavily. Nicotine may be the most common narcotic used by primitive societies. The first transatlantic tribes found by Europeans said that the white man gave them alcohol, but they got their revenge by giving him tobacco. As the light fades on this extraordinary day, the Tulumbi fade into the forest. At first, Dutilleux fears that they have gone for good, but they camp nearby, where there are wonders yet to see. Next morning, it is Dutilleux's turn to visit the Tulambi. Despite his research, their culture and language remain unknown. Jean-Pierre has come to the conclusion that the Tulambi are just what they seem to be, the living ancestors of modern man. Yet, to be convinced, he has questions that need answers. They may have not seen matches or rice or plastic cups, but surely they've seen and heard planes fly by. Maybe they believe them to be chariots of the gods. In any case, the Tulambi are clearly part of what Dutilleux calls the fourth world tribes in the depths of the world's rainforests that are so isolated they escape both the benefits as well as the burdens of human progress. As Dutilleux writes in his journal, There are very few groups of human beings still living in the fourth world. Some survive in the Amazon, a few others can be found in New Guinea. When the last ones are contacted and moved from the Stone Age into the modern world, from being free and masters of their own destiny, to being poor and at the lowest level of our Western society, it is a part of ourselves that will vanish forever. In the tribal world, paying attention to your appearance is a survival tool. The Tulambi use bamboo knives to stay well barbered. The man wear a bone from the cassowary bird through the nose, large necklaces of river shells around their necks, and bird of paradise feathers in their hair. They must look their best to attract a mate. These people are hunters and gatherers. They survive by living with the environment, not off of it. The Tulambi return to Tiu's hospitality. And Geo shows how they make arrows and spearheads. Sleep. Then Jean-Pierre gets down to work. As always in this type of situation, he uses a rudimentary show-and-tell session to begin to understand the Tulambi language. How do you call the house? Anga? Anga? Anga. Anga. How, how, how do you call the grass skirt, this? Aiga. 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 And the necklace, the necklace. Nungwa. Necklace. Nungwa. No. Nungwa. Kamka. 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 Kamaka, Aiga, Aiga, Ange, 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 Sa, 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 No, no, no. Ah, Sa, sleep, 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 sleep. Ah, okay, okay. Class over. They take Jean Pierre out into their forest. Their cloaks are made from bark. They serve as raincoats by day and blankets by night. The entire tribe 
including the best behaved children that I have ever met, move in uncanny silence for fear of alerting the game. They know the migration trails of animals and the best time of year to find fish, the growing cycle of the palms, bamboo, wild fruits and the roots they rely on. They are always on the move. The rhythm of their lives is that of the jungle. For hundreds of generations, life for the Tulambi has revolved around their eternal quest for sustenance. It gives them no time to create complex art or a written language, to develop science or conceive profound metaphysical philosophies. Nor has their endless and simplest form of consumerism led to overpopulation, environmental destruction or the threat of nuclear extermination. They can at least still drink their rivers. But life is short for the Tulambi. They are stalked by diseases like malaria, long conquered by modern medicine. Yes, we can help them, but at what price? If the Tulambi are brought into the modern world, they will suffer the loss of their dignity and traditions to live out their days far below third world poverty levels. Jean-Pierre has lived this dilemma for 25 years. He believes it is inevitable that these last isolated tribes will be found. He also knows that it is better if they are found by people that care enough to fight on their behalf. <laughs> <laughs> 